So let's get into the word. I want you to turn with me to Genesis 41. And we're going to be reading from verses 1 through 8. Then we're going to hop over to verses 15 through 16 and then 25 through 36. And we're going to be dealing with Joseph and how God set Joseph up uh, to be in position to deal with some horrible things that were going to happen in the land. And God has been speaking to his prophets, those who hear him, and have been really giving them information to share with the people, to prepare them, prepare them, uh, not to create fear, but to prepare his children. And um, we're going to see some things in Genesis 41 uh, that will help us to understand uh, how God operates and what he does and how he prepares his children uh, who are obedient to him for things that happen in the earth. And there's some things that are about to happen in the earth at this span of time in Egypt. And Joseph is a Hebrew slave. He was in prison. You know his story. He went through so much. He was sold into slavery by his own brother because he had a dream from God. And he shared that dream with his siblings. And his siblings were envious and jealous to the point that they, they did some things to him and sold him into slavery. And as you follow Joseph's timeline, his life, you see that he had to deal with many different things, but through it all, the one constant in uncertainty regarding his future was his faith, his obedience to do what God said, no matter where he found himself. So he was obedient to God's word, and he was a, a, a righteous man who did what he was supposed to do. Whatever responsibility he had, he did his very best. Whatever, um, wherever he found himself, he had a good reputation. When he was in jail, they threw him in jail because he was um, falsely accused. Uh, he found favor in jail and literally became uh, number two in that jail in terms of how to um, handle things. The warden liked him so much. Uh, so Joseph found favor even when the situation didn't look good. He found favor and thrived in situations that seemed to be oppressive. And the one constant is his obedience to God. But we're about to go somewhere related to a dream and also uh, how God used Joseph to warn the king, Pharaoh, about what was about to happen in the land. So Joseph, in a sense, is going to give them some hard information uh, to let them know what's going to happen but will they receive? Will they hear? So let us read in Genesis 41, verses 1 through 8. And I'm reading from the NIV version. When two years, two full years had passed, Pharaoh had a dream. He was standing by the Nile. When out of the river, there came up seven cows, sleek and fat, and they gazed, or the word says grazed, among the reeds. After them, seven other cows, ugly and gaunt, came up out of the Nile and stood beside those on the riverbank. And the cows that were ugly and gaunt ate up the seven sleek, fat cows. Then Pharaoh woke up. He fell asleep again and had a second dream. Seven heads of grain, healthy and good, were growing on a single stalk. After them, seven other heads of grain sprouted, thin and scorched by the east wind. The thin heads of grain swallowed up the seven healthy, full heads. Then Pharaoh woke up. It had been a dream. In the morning, his mind was troubled, so he sent for all the magicians and wise men of Egypt. Pharaoh told them his dreams, but no one could interpret them for him. This situation is going to require the wisdom of God and someone who has a relationship with God. And so we're going to see that Joseph is going to be brought into the situation because Joseph, before this point in time, had uh, interpreted dreams for folks who he was imprisoned with at some juncture and it helped those people well these people are now in the king's um, surroundings and they're going to tell the king I know of a man 
I know of a man who, who told me about my dream, who interpreted my dream, and everything came to pass just as he said. And so the king says, send him my way. So in Genesis 41, verse 15 through 16, Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream and no one could interpret it. But I've heard it said of you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. I cannot do it, Joseph replied to Pharaoh, but God will give Pharaoh the answers he desires. First and foremost, Joseph acknowledged God in this situation. He let Pharaoh know that the interpretation that he uh, is asking for could only come from God. And so he's acknowledging God and he's pointing Pharaoh to the true and living God, Yahweh. And so let's see what happens as he does this in Genesis 41, verses 25 through 36. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dreams of Pharaoh are one and the same. God has revealed to Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years and the seven good heads of grain are seven years. It is one and the same dream. The seven lean, ugly cows that came up afterward are seven years, and so are the seven worthless heads of grain scorched by the east wind. They are seven years of famine. It is just as I said to Pharaoh, God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Seven years of great abundance are coming throughout the land of Egypt, but seven years of famine will follow them then all the abundance in Egypt will be forgotten and the famine will ravage the land. The abundance in the land will not be remembered because the famine that follows it will be so severe. The reason a dream was given to Pharaoh in two forms is that the matter has been firmly decided by God and God will do it soon. And now let Pharaoh look for a discerning and wise man and put him in charge of the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh appoint commissioners over the land to take a fifth of the harvest of Egypt during the seven years of abundance. They shall, should collect all the food of these good years that are coming and store up the grain under the authority of Pharaoh to be kept in the cities for food. This food should be held in reserve for the country to be used during the seven years of famine that will come upon Egypt so that the country may not be ruined by the famine. Brothers and sisters, I, I wanna share with you from this message, preparing for hard times. Preparing for hard times. God warns Pharaoh. God warns Pharaoh, and what we learn from this passage of scripture is that Pharaoh was troubled by it. Pharaoh did not discount the dream. Pharaoh was troubled and he called together at that point what he considered his wise counsel. Of course, Egypt is a pagan society, an idol worshiping society, but this particular Pharaoh, there's something different about this Pharaoh. This Pharaoh was able to receive a dream and he remembered the dream when he woke up to the point that he acted on the dream by calling out to those supposedly wise in Egypt and magicians to say, hey, we need to understand what this dream means because there are there is some significance to dreams. Many people have had dreams and have not written them down, but the dream is significant and you need someone to interpret it. So he sends uh, eventually for Joseph and Joseph comes and the wise counsel of God is now around the Pharaoh. And this is something we have to understand that we, what we want from our leaders, from those who are in charge, is for them to seek wise counsel to be willing to hear something they don't want to hear and to be uh, discerning to know how to proceed and how to put people in position to make wise decisions. And so in this moment, this Pharaoh, who's humble enough to hear something he didn't want to hear because Pharaoh could have said, I'm going to kill uh, Joseph. But no, he heard what Joseph said and he received what Joseph said. See, that's the key. When you hear a word from God, 
through those he has chosen to give a word, you should hear what the Lord is saying. Because Joseph was quick to point out that the word that was coming for him, the interpretation of the dream was not of his own origin. It came from a true and living God. His name is Yahweh. So there's a warning. And the warning is not to produce fear. It's not fear mongering. Uh, it is what it is. There's something coming. There's com something coming, Pharaoh. And God gave you a dream so that you could act on it. But it's much bigger than Egypt. It's about the children of Israel. It's about them being able to be cared for because there's something that's going to ravage the land where no one is going to be able to get food. And so God is setting some things up in, in place. There are people in position. And Joseph is about to be the one in position. He puts talking about Pharaoh, puts Joseph, a Hebrew slave, who was imprisoned as number two in Egypt. I want you to think about that. The favor that Joseph found favor everywhere he walked no matter what was trying to oppress him, no matter what was trying to keep him from what God has for him, he always found favor. The favor of the Lord is more valuable than any human thing you can ever try to uh, get money or whatever the kingdom currency is his favor and how we activate it is through our faith and so now joseph is going to be in a position to do some wise things which will help so many people the warning was for their protection some of you have heard the warning from god through people and the first thing the world says is that person's fear-mongering. That person is talking about an apocalyptic situation. And you know what? Ignore the person. But the warning is to prepare and protect. Some of you have discounted what the prophets in the earth have said. And you've been distracted trying to get back to normal. There's some abundance and there's been abundance in the land. But are we wise enough to hear from God about what is going to happen in this land? I'm talking about where you live. I'm talking about the county, the city, the state, the country you live in. And it's going to be something global. Are you preparing? Are you in position as Joseph will soon show us how to prepare for famine, how to deal with uncertainty that's going to hit the people and those who do what they're supposed to do will be in position to help others because ultimately Joseph would be in position to store up one fifth of the things that they would, would harvest, the grain and all of these other things so that when the time would come, when there's famine in the land, there's some things stored up to be able to help other people. People would still be able to get what they need. Brothers and sisters, are you storing up? Are you doing what you need to do to be in position to be a blessing to somebody else? See, the, the storing up is not a hoarding. We'll be back in a moment. But first, COVID-19 is the household name that has changed the way communities worship together. At BGI, we're here for you. With live stream worship on Sundays at 8 a.m., 10.30 a.m., and noon at ByGodInspired.org. And you can watch live via our mobile app. Go to bygodinspired.org backslash app.php to download it. You can also download it right under our live stream player on our streaming page. Our mobile app is packed with rich content, including on-demand videos, Bible study audio teachings, pastor blogs, and so much more. We are more connected now than ever before as we honor Hebrews 10:25. Do not forsake in the assembly of believers. We're just assembled in the comfort of our personal space. BGI is meeting you where you are in the comfort of that space. Share with others. Is being prepared to help those 
things get bad. So, so preparing for hard times, time and time again through the word of God, we have seen when God has, has warned people about things that were going to come in the earth. And those who heard, heard the call, did what they were supposed to do, they prepared and they were in position to overcome. But those who were ignoring, those who, uh, it's fear mongering, those who say it's apocalyptic, all those who say don't listen to that, just keep doing what you're doing. When the time comes, when there's uh, uncertainty, they're not in position, and now you have the selfishness that's about getting everything they can, hoarding up things for themselves like toilet paper. The foolishness of hoarding up toilet paper, but you don't have food. Think about that for a second, brothers and sisters. When we started seeing things happen in the earth, no matter what its origins are, first thing people began to do was store up toilet, toilet paper. And they weren't sharing. There were people literally in stores fighting over toilet paper. Let me tell you what I did. And this is something I want you to know. I'm looking at the folks fighting over toilet paper. And I go right down the aisle and I see the staples full. I see the, the flour and the sugar and the beans. I see the canned meat such as salmon and, and canned chicken and canned vegetables full. I see the evaporated milk, canned evaporated milk full. Folks fighting over toilet paper. So I told the people here at BGI, I said, you know, get what you can, but buy detergent, buy bleach. Because if you don't have toilet paper, and I'm not trying to get grotesque here, whatever you have you use, you can wash it. You see, God gives us wisdom. You don't have to get caught up in all of that stuff, but he gives you wisdom to do some things, to be in position. And what you see is when you get a taste of things that are uncertain, selfish nature in people begin to hoard up things that are insignificant. Hoarding up toilet paper. I just want to be quiet on that for just a second. Were they truly preparing? I don't know what they were preparing for, uh, but as I walked down the aisles of the things that you would need to sustain yourself, it's full. But I go down an aisle with potato chips and all this stuff, that's empty. I look over and I go to the meat section and that's empty and people buying frozen stuff. Well, what if your power goes out? But all of the things that have the ability to last a longer period of time, such as your staples, your sugar, your, your rice, your beans, all of these sort of things, full. See, foolish people leaning on their own understanding will do foolish things. And many of you have been a witness or maybe part of foolishness. You've seen people getting things that don't make any sense. Brothers and sisters, what we can learn is that when God gives us revelation about an impending danger, he also gives us provision and he gives us direction. Will you take the direction? Because see, the direction will seem foolish to people who are not connected to God. See, it's, it's kingdom information. We call it intel. See, God is an omnipresent God. He's everywhere. So those of us who worship him in spirit and in truth, meditating and praying at all times, he gives us instructions. It may not make sense in the moment, but if you just do what he says, you'll find out why later. So Joseph is in position. He's in position. He's the number two in Egypt. And that's what you'll find. Sometimes it's better to be a number two than a number one. Let the number one deal with the headaches. The number two may be the one who will get the work done. See, many of you might be trying to become number one, and God's saying, I'm trying to make you number two. Your number one is going to give you cover so that you can accomplish the mission that I have for you. The number one in control is Pharaoh. He has to deal with the politics of the role. He has to deal with all kind of craziness, unhappy people. But the number two has more control. It can get some things done. Many of you think power is being number one when God says true power is being number two. Oh, somebody just missed that one. That just went right over your head. I, I came all the way here and that was worth the whole drive over here for some of you. You know, when God gives us a warning, it's for our good. He warns us about different things. He warns us about our sinful nature. He tells us to repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. Now I can tell you, 
Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is upon you. It's all around you. This is the moment to repent. It's for your good. It's not for your bad. But when people talk about repentance and it's time to repent, people get offended. Because people want to stay in what we call a Galatians 5, 19 through 21 mindset. And so those who stay in the Galatians 5, 19 through 21 mindset, talking about the works of the flesh, they are not going to want to hear well, thus says the Lord, even an interpretation of a dream that is going to warn people and protect them and get them in position to be able to sustain when everybody else is suffering. The Galatians 5, 19 through 21 world is going to deal with some things that's coming around the corner. And those of you who worship the Father in spirit and, and in truth, if you hear what he says and act on it, prepared, not in a frenzy, not in fear, but saying, glory, hallelujah, thank you, Father. You said in your word, you'll never allow me to be put to shame. And guess what you're doing now? You are making sure I'm not put to shame. They laughed at me all this time because I trust you and now who's going to get the last laugh but guess what I'm not going to laugh at them when they need something I'm going to make sure I help them for your glory can I get an amen on that brothers and sisters so you got to understand you can't be ready for something you don't know about we can't be ready for something we don't know about so that's why it's important for each one of us in our own personal relationship with the savior to study the word to show ourselves approved have a prayer life a prayer life is conversation it's conversation the same conversation you're having with people about situations you need to be having that conversation with the lord the conversation will reveal to you some things if you just take time to listen and receive feedback through your meditation of the word. God is always letting us know he informs us. The word of God says in Romans 8, 17, those of us who believe that Yeshua, his Hebrew name, Jesus Christ, that he, he died on the cross for our sins, was raised from the dead three days later with all power and sits at the right hand of the Father. And, and those of us who have confessed our sins with a godly sorrow, which worketh repentance and have turned to the Savior to receive the Holy Spirit, which teaches us all things. Those of us, he informs us, we are joint heirs, as it says in Romans 8, 17 with Christ, joint heirs. So just like Christ always had foreknowledge of what was about to happen and even happen to him as he shared it in scripture, we also receive foreknowledge from the Father. But will we move on what he said? Will we be obedient to the instructions? The instructions will not make sense to those of you uh, who may not be tied to God, but those of you who are tied to God, those of us who are sons and daughters of God, it will make sense because because as we look back and we trusted God before, he never failed us then. So there's some, there's some instructions. Prepare for hard times. Prepare. If you prepare, the times won't be hard to you. If you prepare and do what you need to do and have the right intent to, to be a blessing to someone else who, who might not have heard because they were distracted, guess what? Now your light is going to shine. The Savior is going to lift you up like a light on a table. You're going to be lifted up for people to see. Prepare. Preparation. Nobody wants to prepare for anything, but everybody wants to eat from your table. You know, brothers and sisters, in Psalm 23, it says that he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies and my cup runneth over. In order to get to that table, you gotta walk to the table. You gotta, there's some things that have to happen and you gotta have to be patient when a table is being prepared. See, there's preparation. When a table is being built, there may not be things on it at that moment, but everything that happens to that table gets in position for whatever's going to sit on that table. Preparation. Nobody wants to prepare, but everybody wants to eat from the table. Brothers and sisters, so God informs us and then faith moves us into action. What are you going to see from Joseph is that it moved him into action. He began to do what he needed to do to store up. They stored up a fifth of everything. And when the time came, he was in position to help so many people. That's what preparation does. But it requires obedience. It requires a relationship. And it requires hearing 
what God says and then doing. Don't just be a hearer and not do what he says. You know, what I love about Joseph's understanding of Pharaoh's dream is that he first acknowledged the Savior. He acknowledged the Father in heaven. And then there was instantaneous revelation around the dream. That's how quick God can give it to you in that moment. It leads me to the scripture that says, don't, don't worry about what to say if you are brought before the rulers and authorities and people in high positions. I'll give you what to say. God gave Joseph what to say at that moment. Brothers and sisters, George, uh, Joseph was put in charge to store up. He prepared. He stockpiled food and resources to be able to sell to others. He did not hoard it for himself. He did it for others. Pharaoh gave glory to God unknowingly by appointing a child of God to handle all of the affairs of the king. That's what God will do for you. He'll put you, oh my goodness, some of the people you think are your enemies will be the ones who put you in position because they have to acknowledge the God in you. They have to acknowledge the God in you because when, when Joseph gave Pharaoh the interpretation of the dream, uh, Pharaoh could have said that's, a, that's hogwash. But he received what Joseph said and he acknowledged the fact in scripture that this man hears from the true and living God by appointing the Hebrew. Inspired to support By God Inspired Ministry with your gift to BGI, we'll also send you a signed copy of Pastor Vincent J. McCaskill's inspiring book, Healing from Lies Seen as Truth, Learning to Listen and Hear God. We've made giving simple through our text to give number, 901-244-4688. That's 901-244-4688. Enter the amount and follow the prompts. And here are other ways you can ensure BGI receives your tax-deductible contribution.